Today we have a most amazing and majestic subject. God himself. Who he is. Jesus in John chapter 4 says these amazing yet simple words. God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. There's not even a Greek letter for the word A. It simply says in the scripture God is spirit. And then in the book of Timothy Paul tells us that God dwells in light unapproachable, glorious. Now I want you to cast your mind back to the time when you have read the book of Ezekiel or the book of Isaiah and specifically Isaiah chapter 6 and the beginning of that verse 1 where it says that in the year King Uzziah died I saw the Lord and he was high and lifted up. And then supposing that you have read the book of Ezekiel and particularly the opening chapter of chapter 1 of Ezekiel. We read of a most amazing uh, vision that would look complex to the mind when Ezekiel the priest was in captivity by the river Kibar and we see that he beheld this fire coming out of the north that was catching a hold of itself and entwining into itself. A fire burning like amber, a brilliant yellowy orange fire or like electrolyte, a yellowish type jewel. And then we see that it beheld out of that coming living creatures and so on. And then we see when his vision looks higher and he sees above all this, he sees this amazing crystalline firmament. And then he sees the likeness of the appearance of a man of fire upon a throne. Now, beloved children of God, no matter what we believe or theologically holds, I would challenge any one of you to find in the scriptures that when it speaks about the throne of the Almighty in heaven or in the visions that there are more than one throne. And so when we look upon what the prophets have seen they beheld only one throne. They beheld only one God. And they beheld in their a vision, whether it be a vision of the night or vision of the day or caught up by the Spirit of God. They only beheld one supreme being seated upon that throne. This is a tremendous, tremendous truth that we need to go by the scriptures. We need to go by what the prophets have seen in the old and the new covenant. The most amazing appearance of the Lord God was to John on the Isle of Patmos. And when we look at chapter 1 of the book of Revelation, what do we see? He says, I am he who was dead and is alive. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the Almighty, indeed. And who is this glorious personage that was appearing then to John on the Isle of Patmos? If he was dead and is now alive, it can only refer to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the Living God, who appeared to the Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos and to no other. And yet he says he is the first and the last the Almighty indeed. And this is amazing 
because the description that we see of the Lord Jesus Christ is that he had hair as white as wool, his eyes as flames of fire and shining as the brightness of the sun. Well, if we go back into the book of Daniel, I believe it's chapter 9, we find a description there of a personage who is described as the Ancient of Days, with his hair as white as wool, with flames of fire surrounding him. Ah, but you say, that's God the Father. Well, let's now go to the book of Thessalonians. And what do we see when it says that he shall appear? He shall be glorified in his saints, but he shall appear surrounded with flaming fire, taking vengeance upon them that obey not the gospel of Jesus Christ. And who is that divine personage, I would say? And so we see in Scripture, very plainly, in the book of Revelation, there was a throne, chapter 4 and chapter 5. And what do we see? We see the personage sat upon the throne, God himself and description of him upon the throne and then we see in chapter 5 the throne again but do we see two thrones do we see three thrones or one now I've seen in some Bibles a descriptions and uh, drawings of the Trinity and I've seen one drawing at least where it shows three thrones in heaven, one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. But you see, none of the prophets ever saw three thrones. They never saw three beings in heaven. So the question is, where does this word Trinity come from? Oh yes, God is Father, God is Son, God is Holy Ghost. But where does this word Trinity? Well, to my understanding and knowledge, you have to go back to the 3rd and 4th centuries, to the councils that were formed by the bishops. And by this time, the Christian faith had been watered down. There was much that was extra, extraneous, and produced in those times by theological thinkers that are not in accord with the scriptures. There were vast arguments going on about the nature or the dual nature of Christ and Jesus Christ himself. There were arguments going on this way that even produced a most grotesque term that has been passed down through history, that Mary was the mother of God. And if anything, to be correct, we should say that Mary was the mother of the Son of God, if you want to do things correctly. Now I'm just wanting for you to think about these things. Go into the book of Ezekiel, go right through the Old Testament, see if you can find three thrones of any heavenly vision or vision that the prophets had or indeed in the new covenant that would show that in heaven there is a throne for the Father, a throne for the Son and a throne for the Holy Ghost. Now beloved children of God this is just the beginning of something I desire to share with you and I'm bringing it before you to stir you up and cause you to read the scriptures and see if what I am saying is so. Any vision that a man or a woman has that doesn't conform to the scriptures is not worth even thinking about. And if I bring you such a, a vision and say, I saw three thrones in heaven, or I saw this or that or the other, if it's not according to scripture, then you are not to receive it. And in the next video, I'll go into some little details how the Lord revealed things to me about himself many years ago, even as a small child. And just to give you a little hint, 
In those experiences or visions, I never saw three thrones, I never saw three beings. Or, dare I say it, three gods. God bless you, and may the Holy Ghost stir your heart to look into these things, and not just to believe what church councils said in 300 or 400 AD. Amen. Bless you all.